Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. So thrilled to introduce to you our next guest, author John M. Simmons. How are you this morning, Good, John? Hi. Great to have you here. It's I'm a pleasure. so excited to hear what you have to say about adoption and with your experiences with that. It has obviously touched your family in a very special way. And any family who has undergone the process of adoption, I'm sure could share in those experiences that you have. But you're here this morning to share with us uh, your new book, a, me a memoir rather, to sing frogs. And this kind of chronicles your family's personal quest in this adoption process. But first off, you wrote the book a marvelous journey, the marvelous journey home, and that is a, a fictional story that kind right. of chronicles uh, a child's experience with right. adoption. Is that correct? Right. Uh, the first book, the marvelous journey home, is kind mm -hmm. of the rainbow and unicorn version of adoption that you know you would anticipate uh, reading about in an adoption in an adoption book. It's kind of more from the view of my daughter Sarah, a five-year-old, when we got her, mm -hmm. and. Uh, as we got the book out there, more and more people were saying, you know what, there's a lot more to this story. We heard a lot of things that were going on while you were adopting, and we want the true story. We want the real thing. And, and that's where To Sing Frogs came right, from. Right, exactly. And so um, there were a lot of things that had continued to happen after we got Sarah home, some really incredible events and some really disappointing events and a whole bunch of things, and there was just a lot more to the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, we started from scratch. We went back through and thought, you know what, let's, let's get away from the honeymoon period story adoption that we did with The Marvelous Journey Home and just do the raw adoption story that goes through all of the good, all of the bad, all of the emotion, all of the feelings, uh, the good and the bad. And that's what to sing for us. So I'd like you to share with our audience. You have nine children. I think so. You <laughs> think so? Count those. Down. You'll run out of fingers pretty soon <laughs> right. if you get any more. But uh, three are biological, right. correct? And then the rest are adopted. Right. We adopted one little boy here in the states. He was a month old when we got him. Jack is mm -hmm. 18 now. He has Down syndrome, and he's just he's the happiness in our home. Uh, then we have four daughters who are biological sisters who are from Russia and another little boy who's unrelated to the girls uh, who we have in our family. So that makes nine. Very good. So John, let's delve into this book and the experiences that you chose to put in here. I mean, I can't even imagine the, the process and the challenges that you may have endured in trying to get those special kids that you wanted to adopt and bring back here and, and to expand your family with. Why did you choose to write this book and what do you hope your audience gets out of it? Um, yeah, with the Sing Frogs, um, you, you'll watch an author go from a very cynical businessman. I started a family business uh, in, in the late 80s, and uh, my brothers joined me, and it's become very successful. And uh, so I was a very cynical businessman, and I could afford to go anywhere in the world I wanted to and adopt kids. Um, but it was about us. It was about our family. It was about building a family. I mean, people say adoption. It's family building. Whether you have them biologically, uh, whether you adopt them, it's, it's family building. And it starts off to be about parents. You know, this is what I want. I want kids. I want a family. And then as, uh, as it progresses, you, you end up saying, this is about kids. This isn't about me. It's, what, it's what's best for the kids. And, and in that sense, adoption and biologically uh, building a family are exactly the same. But as I got over there, I just fell in love with these kids. Um, we had a unique opportunity to spend a lot of time with them. Usually in Russia, you just spent time with the children that you were adopting. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, some, for some reason, we ended up spending a lot of time with Sarah's friends. Mm -hmm. And I just fell in love with these kids. And I looked at them and said, you'll never get out of here. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing I wanted people to understand is that there are children there who need homes. And those who can adopt, I want them to adopt. Um, not just... Uh, internationally. I want kids here to have homes. Um, you know, I hear people say, I'm so tired of waiting. We've been trying to adopt for years. If it's through the U.S. or anywhere? In, anywhere. Okay. And, and you know, they're, they're off looking to bring home a, a brand new baby in a pink or blue ba blanket from the hospital and uh, live happily ever after. And I want them to see that you don't need a child who looks like you like I thought I did. You don't need a brand new baby. Um, if, you're if you're tired of waiting for a baby, imagine how tired a five-year-old or a seven-year-old or a ten-year-old is mm -hmm. of waiting for parents. And, and I want people to take that out of the book. I want them to fall in love with these kids and see that they're, they're not orphans. They're children without parents. We, we think, oh, orphans, they're worthless kids. Nobody wants them. Mm -hmm. 
their, their children without parents, who wait for parents. Um, I want them to see that, and then I want them to remember the, the children who were left behind. We've started an organization in the Republic of Georgia that works with children who are aging out of orphanages to help them get an education and have successful lives and learn how to take care of their families so that their kids aren't back in the orphanage in the next generation. Mm -hmm. that, that's amazing. I, like I said, I can't even imagine some of those challenges that you dealt with. Can you share an experience of a particular challenge that you cover in this book and, and why you chose to put it in this book and share it with your audience? Oh gosh, um, a particular challenge. Um, family building is is just rife with challenges. It doesn't matter whether it's biological. We've had children biologically, we've adopted. There's just no easy way to get kids and maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. Maybe it makes us appreciate them as much as we should. Um, adopting in the states, the, we've, we've done that as well. There's challenges there. There's challenges adopting overseas. Um, the, probably the biggest challenges for us um, was just dealing with the bureaucracy, the inner country bureaucracy. Um, people say, man, it must have been tough with Russia. It was, but it was tough with the United States bureaucracy as well. Mm -hmm. And so when you start getting into adoption, whether it's international or domestic, there's a lot of bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. so, so share why you did choose to adopt internationally sure. versus in the U.S. because we were, we were talking about this before, how some people often say, well, there, you know, there's kids everywhere that need to be adopted. That's not uh, different in any country. It's the same all around. But why right. did you choose Russia? Well, first of all, um, we'd adopted here in the state and it's really tough to adopt children who don't have special needs here in the States if you already have kids. And we had, we adopted Jack, he was our fourth child. And uh, then as we started looking into adoption again, they said, look, you'll either need to do foster care or special needs. And we just, we weren't comfortable with foster care. We wanted to make a promise to a child, this is your home. If you're good, it's your home. If you're bad, it's your home. If, um, if the state doesn't like it, it's still your home. They don't, they don't get to make that choice, we do. And from a foster parent position, you just can't make those promises. Mm -hmm. um, the state decides if they're going to send it back to abusive and neglectful parents yet again, and yet again, and yet again. So the thing with an international adoption is uh, once you're finished at the court, it's final, it's done. When we adopted Jack, uh, the state of Utah had a, a six month waiting period before we could finalize the adoption. He wasn't ours for six months. And some states are worse, some are a little bit better, but there's a big waiting period where with international, it's just over, it's done. Uh, the reason we chose Russia, um, I, I warned you in the beginning, I was a cynical businessman. This is, this is about a journey of me. It's not as much about the kids as it is me. And you won't like the guy in the first couple of uh, chapters of To Sing Frogs. One of the reasons I went to Russia was I wanted children who look like me. Now, it wasn't that I couldn't have loved a black child or a Native American child or a Hispanic child. I was really concerned about a, a 14, 15, 16 year old child coming to me and saying, I don't know if I fit in with my family or my people. And I just wouldn't have dealt well with that. And so I told my wife, look, I want kids who look like me. We can afford Russia. Let's do that. Um, as we got over there, Sarah had a best friend who was a little Asian girl, and I just fell in love with that little girl. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how stupid of me. Um, this child would have fit into our family very, very well. Um, I don't need a child who looks like me. I don't need a, a brand new baby wrapped up in a pink blanket. I'm here with these five and six and seven year olds, and I'm in love with these kids. And if I had the resources, I'd take all of them. How difficult was that being in Russia and seeing the needs of, of all these kids. I mean, obviously, you, you have nine children, which is wonderful. I mean, I mean, the big question is, how do you choose? How does that happen? And what's going through your head when you see the needs there just out before you and uh, feeling helpless? Uh, uh, and the beauty of it is, is you don't have to choose uh, per se. What happens is you do your paperwork, mm -hmm. you turn it in, and then they make recommendations. Uh, for instance, we send in our paperwork and then they, uh, they sent us a recommendation for Sarah and Celeste and there were pictures of the little girls and a little bit of history on them. And they said, uh, do you like what you see here? Would you agree to move forward on this? Well, mm -hmm. now we don't have to stand in a group of 30 kids and say, you know, I'm going to pick you and the rest of you go away. But seeing that paperwork come before you, there is still the process of, am I going to move forward with this? or set that aside and wait right, for another Right, right. Well, for instance, you, I call it judgment day. When you sit down and they, you have a, a paper that you fill out or a couple of papers, mm -hmm. and it asks what kind of conditions you'll accept in a child. And you'll go through this whether you adopt in the United States or internationally. 
And it says, what kind of conditions would you accept? And it starts off, a child who needs glasses. And you go, yeah, right, I'm a saint. I wear glasses. I'll take a kid <laughs> who needs glasses. And uh, You know, you go down a little bit, and it says allergies. And you go, sure, what the heck, I'll, I'll take a kid with allergies. And it says severe allergies. And you go, wait, what does that mean? how severe? Mm -hmm. Can they eat? Uh, if we go to a restaurant, is there something on the menu they can eat? Um, and, and you start to think about that. And you make your decision there, and you go a little bit further. And all of a sudden, you're talking about a child who's on a respirator, or a child who is uh, on a tube feeder, or AIDS babies. Now, somewhere in there, you draw a line and say, I'm not going to take that child. And you look at the paper and say, I thought I was a better person than that. But the difference is, is when you have a child biologically, you deal with it. You're t you know you're taking those chances, and if the child's born blind, you get the resources and you deal with it. If the child's born with Down syndrome, you, you check it out, you find out what's going on, you gather your resources and you deal with it. When you're filling out that adoption paperwork, if you say, I will take a child who's blind, you're gonna get it. You aren't saying throw my name in and with a whole bunch of others and draw it out of the hat, and if that's what I get, I get it. When you put that, that's what you're gonna get. And so that's, that's really tough when you do that. And so you've, you've done those things. And uh, when you get your recommendations back, it's not necessarily along the line of the paperwork that you filled out. Mm -hmm. we, told pe we told them how old of a child we'd accept, what conditions we'd accept. Um, and it started coming back, and it didn't fall within this. In fact, that was a real, um, there's a part in the, in the book, Into Seeing Frogs, where you have me having it out with our adoption agency, saying, look, um, I sent you an application that had all of these things in it. Either you follow that or I'll end this contract. Mm. And my wife just sick to her stomach that I would, <laughs> that I would do that. Wow, so the so last two things, we have about a minute left. First off, if you could uh, share with our audience, I guess, one or two things that you learned about the world of international adoption that you want them to know and be aware of, what would you say? You know what, it wouldn't be about international adoption. Mm -hmm. I'll just say kids. I don't care whether people adopt kids internationally or here in the States or if they do foster to adopt, I don't care. I want them to get these kids into homes. Mm -hmm. I want these kids to have the mamas and papas that they wait for every day, that they ask for every day. And then I want them to remember the kids who will never have those mamas and papas again. Mm -hmm. And I want them to help them to be successful. And then last thing I had to ask, we have about 30 seconds left, to sing frogs. Where did this <laughs> title come from? You know what? A lot of things happen. My wife calls them miracles. Mm -hmm. I call them, wow, I can't believe that happened. And eventually you'll see me move a lot closer to where she is by the end of the book. Mm -hmm. um, but there were a lot of things that didn't make sense to a guy who plugs things into a calculator. And as I was talking with a person later in the book in a language other than uh, English, there was a phrase that came out and the direct translation was, to sing frogs. Mm. And the person said, well, that doesn't make any sense. And I said, you know, maybe there's something lost in translation. Maybe I just don't get it. Or maybe it doesn't make sense. I'm becoming more and more convinced that some things aren't supposed to. Wow, so where can we find your books online? Uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, about any place uh, you can find it. Very good. Thank you so much, John. We it was my really pleasure. appreciate thank your you. time here. Be sure to check out uh, his work online. And thank you once again for joining us. Hope you guys were able to glean some important information from that. We'll be right back after this quick break. We're going to be talking about the Antelope Stampede Festival.